Dear brothers and sisters, there are two scenes on Laylatul Qadr that are profound and engage the angels in a way that they are not engaged at any other time of the year. And I want you to picture these two scenes. The first scene is the scene of hope, the scene of traffic, where you literally have angels transferring between the heavens and the earth, descending upon the various masajid, descending upon the various homes, descending upon every individual that is engaged in a state of dhikr and a state of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taking those names back up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if the Prophet sallallahu said that there is not a single space in general in the heavens of four fingers except that there is an angel that is standing or bowing or prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the heavens are creaking from the amount of malaika, the amount of angels, the scene of the angels going back and forth between the heavens and the earth is a profound scene. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be amongst those whose deeds are recorded by Jibreel alayhi salam and taken back up to our Rabb, to our Lord and Sustainer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with us. Allahumma ameen. And then you have the other side of it, which doesn't include a transfer between the heavens and the earth, but is the malaika, the angels in the heavens amongst themselves. And this is what we have from the narrations of the writing of the decree, the aqdar, the different decrees that are made that night. If you could hear the pens and the scrolls that the Prophet ﷺ was talking about, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees for each and every single person what is to come for that year. And that comes from Allah al mahfuz from his preser preserved tablet subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the malaika and the angels collecting those scrolls amongst themselves. It's quite a scene. And subhanAllah, if you think about, you know, uh, some of the, the noisy, busy scenes when something first opens in the worldly sense, right? The minute the stock market opens and the people rushing to open the doors of their businesses after Fajr, you know, in, in, in places where they pray Salah and then they begin their day of work and just the noise of the shops opening up. If you've been in Medina after Salat al duha right? Like just all the noise of the busyness getting started. And think of the heavens as the aqdar, the decrees are being transferred from angel to angel and the writing is taking place. And in those writings is everything that has to do with you for the year to come. Everything that has to do with you for the year to come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubaraka, inna kunna mundirin, fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakim. Amran min indina, inna kunna mursirin, rahmatan min rabbika, inna hu huwa samir alim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that indeed we have sent it down on a blessed night, referring to the Quran, for we always warn, give people sufficient admonishment. And on that night, that blessed night, Every single matter is ordained by a command from us and we have always sent messengers as a mercy from your Lord. He alone is truly the all-hearing and the all-knowing. Inna anzanahu fi laylatin mubaraka. We have sent it on a blessed night. Inna anzanahu fi laylatil qadr. The night of decree. And so the first thing that you take from that is if it is a Mubarak night, a blessed night, then be engaged in what is Mubaraka, be engaged in blessed deeds and nothing else. And be Mubaraka, be someone who is blessed to everyone and everything around you on that night. As Isa alayhi salam says, وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتَ Allah made me blessed wherever I am. Bring Baraka to every place and every environment that you are in, in those nights as you are seeking the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what makes it so special that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to send this book on this night? As the ulama mentioned, Allah has the greatest qadr, the greatest estimation. And He sent the greatest book with the greatest angel to the greatest prophet, the prophet with the greatest qadr. And in that book, the greatest qadr. And in the month with the greatest qadr. It is a night of power, a night of decree, a night of blessing. And subhanAllah, that idea of the decree taking place is the one that I just want us to spend a few minutes with today ta'ala. The decree itself, every single precise matter is ordained. There are different types of writings in which the decree takes place. We have al lawh al-Mahfud, which is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And then you have the writings of the angels and you have the writing of the human being when they are in the womb. And you have the daily writings that take place. 
And when it comes to all of these different things, all of them can be adjusted, except for Allah al-Mahfud, because Allah al-Mahfud, the preserved tablet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, takes into consideration all of the changes that would happen already. That so-and-so would make dua on this point, so-and-so would make a change in their life on this point, and so the records of the angels are adjusted accordingly, and the adjustments are already recorded in the preserved tablet of the all-knowing and the all-wise. But of the mercy of these adjustments taking place on Laylatul Qadr is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose that the night of decree would come down on the night that the believers would be engaged in worship. Even a person who's, genu who's generally distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you think that they're going to be sinning on that night? That they're going to be disobedient on that night? Even people that generally don't come to the masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are engaged in the masajid on that night. They're trying to engage in some sort of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so as the ulama said, look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he chose the decree to come down when you are in the best state that you could possibly be. When you're in the best state of ibadah. And so the decree is most likely to be in your favor. The Prophet sallallahu for example, when he said that I like to fast on Mondays and Thursdays because the deeds are taken up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The deeds ascend, the decree descends. And he wanted to be in a state of ibadah when that is happening, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in Ramadan, you are fasting, you are praying, you are reading Quran, and that shows you that your Lord wants to send you rahmah, decrees for you mercy, is giving you the best opportunity for yourself. As Ibn, uh, as Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala says, he said rahimahullah ta'ala that what comes down on that night is everything that will happen of that year in terms of the recording of your sustenance, what you're going to gain that year. So as you're doing your accounting for the year and you're making all sorts of your strategic decisions of what you want to earn that year, just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees every drop of rain that will fall, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that night decrees every single penny that will go into your account. Your risk, your sustenance is decreed. What will happen in terms of your lifespan, the events of the year that will come, so SubhanAllah, Ibn Abbas said that on that night, who's going to pass away that year comes down. You know, imagine a person that's waiting to see the, the results of something. You've, you've tried to you know, pass an exam. You've tried to get on a team. You've tried to match somewhere. You've, you're waiting for the results to come out. We've all had that feeling where you're clicking on something to see if your name is going to be there. Imagine that there are scrolls that are printed on that night. And there are the names of the people that will die that year. And it could be very well that our names are written in those scrolls. And SubhanAllah, there's one way that Ibn Abbas extends this. He says, even Hajj. He says, Ya Hajju Fulan wa Ya Hajju Fulan. Allah writes down on that night the scrolls of Hajj. You wait for the visas. You wait for the quotas from, you know, from, from the government of Saudi Arabia. You wait for the visas to come. You wait for this. You wait for that. The results come out tonight or whatever night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed Laylatul Qadr to be. So make the niyyah for hajj. Oh Allah, grant us hajj mabrur. Oh Allah, grant us an accepted hajj. Let our names be on those printed records. But then he gives this scene. And I'm going to end with this inshaAllah ta'ala. He said, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, this is, this is such a powerful statement. It shakes you to the core. He said, you'll see a man walking around in the marketplace. And at that moment, right, subhanAllah, the decree just came down and his name appeared on the scrolls of those who will die this year. So SubhanAllah, we're sitting in this masjid. We pray that we are in a state of ibadah, engaged in ibadah. You're sitting there, a person sitting there, we're eating suhoor together, you might be going home, coming back, planning the rest of your night, planning the rest of your day. And at that moment, an angel just received a scroll that has your name for passing away that year. And that's why, as you are in the end of Ramadan, one of the most blessed things that you could be asking for is husnul khitam, a good ending. We're not a people who make dua for long lives just for the sake of living long. We are a people who make dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take us from this life when it is best for us, when we're in the best state of iman. And just as Allah azza wa prepares you and sets you up to be in the best state of practice and faith in the end of Ramadan, Allah azza wa also gives you a trajectory to be in the best place at the end of your life. And so as you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to decree in favor for you, this risk, this thing that you always wanted, perhaps you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a child, perhaps you're asking Allah for a spouse, a job, you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open this door for you and open that door for you. 
make sure that you're also asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to facilitate your exit from this door into the next realm in the best of ways. Because there is no risk that will be decreed that is more precious than a good ending. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a good ending to this Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree for us husn al-khitam, a good ending from this life. And grant us al-firdaus al-a'la and the companionship of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the righteous company. Allahumma innaka afu wa tuhibbu al-afwa, fa'afu anni. Allahumma innaka afu wa tuhibbu al-afwa, fa'afu anni. Allahumma innaka afu wa tuhibbu al-afwa, fa'afu anni. Allahumma innaka afu wa kareem wa tuhibbu al-afwa, fa'afu anni. Oh Allah, you are forgiving, you are generous, you love to forgive, so forgive me. May Allah not make us amongst the deprived, may Allah not make us amongst the negligent. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be amongst those who are fully forgiven on that night and forbidden from the fire. Allahumma ameen. Assalamu alaikum Islam Box family. We need your support more than ever. Your support can help us continue to educate and motivate people to make and publish videos daily. Jazakallah.